Kia ora katou, katoa. Uh, my name's Tom Searle, as Tim said, and I look after the factory and operations up at Lee Fisheries. So this is uh, slightly out of my usual uh, comfort zone, usual forum of, uh, usually by now I'm having a little nana nap in the afternoon, um, kind of start work at four in the morning. So anyway, I'm going to tell you a bit about the, the good work that we're doing out on the water. Um, it's been, uh, it's been interesting today. Thank you to those who have acknowledged the, the hard work that some of the seafood industry is doing. Um, and there's been some, some lots, lots of challenges there as well. So uh, I, yeah, I want to assure you there is a lot of good work going on out there. Um, the good news doesn't always sell, but I'll, uh, I'll try to tell you a little bit, bit about what we're doing on the water. So I'll just run through a bit of an outline. So Lee Fisheries, uh, who we are, our fishermen, um, the fleet and our affinity with, with birds. Black Petrel Working Group, which was touched on nicely um, earlier by Nicola and uh, Janice in her clip. Um, the work we're doing both on and off the water. A little bit about uh, the future and, and some potential next steps. And then I've got, it seems to, be, seems to be the theme of the day, but a bit of a take home challenge for you. So Lee Fisheries, um, we were fo founded in 1957. Um, on the same site we, are, we remain on today, um, up in Lee. A bunch of fishermen frustrated with port prices they were receiving um, for their fish got together, and uh, today some of those fishers are still shareholders. Just like to acknowledge Nati Fata also as, uh, as minor shareholders of us. Um, so 90% of what we do um, in Lee goes offshore, um, but uh, about two or three years ago we... Um, we sort of got sick of that standing around at a barbecue with friends and people saying, oh, you guys are just like the lamb guys, you know, it all, go, all the good stuff goes offshore. So I can assure you we now, um, now have our fish in about 42, I think, of Metro's top 50 restaurants in Auckland on a daily basis. Um, so most of it, go, it goes for, to all corners of the globe, whole chilled, just in a poly box, gut in, um, and we like to say we add more value by doing less. Um, because we, we like the chef to, rather than making it a skin and bone fillet, and turning it into a commodity, we like the chef to be able to see the, the, the quality. Um, so we've got subsidiary or associate offices um, in, in LA, Zurich, Singapore, as well as a lobster company in Auckland and, of course, our domestic company. Uh, so a bit about the fleet, just to set the scene. So we're, we're talking quite small vessels. Um, picture of the Jan here. It's about a 40-foot boat. Um, <clears throat> Artisanal fleet is about 25 vessels unloading to us um, throughout the week, and the, they tend to be crewed by a, a skipper and one or two crew. So very weather affected, it only takes 15 or so knots of easterlies before the, the guys struggle to, uh, to get a freight or to get out there. Um, and they're unloading anywhere between Hohorter in the north, Totra north, Monganui, Tutukaka, Whangarei, Lee, um, as well as a, a bunch of boats out of, out of Tauranga, but they move up and down depending on the seasonality. Um, but some of them are fishing right out here in, in the Hauriki Gulf. So um, fishing by long line, so hook and line, one, one fish at a time comes on board. It's Ikijimi spiked, um, and that gives us our sashimi quality fish. Target species, um, we, so we, we're catching a range of inshore species. So snapper by far is the predominant species, but we try to catch a couple of kilos of something else for every kilo of snapper we catch. So in the far north at the moment, we're landing a lot of Cherokee, Gurna, John Dory, Trevally, Granddaddy, Harpook are a big range of fish. Um, and we like to say that each fish that we land tells a story. So when the, when the fish are packed in the factory, um, the vessel name and the, <clears throat> and the uh, name of the, of the guy who caught it goes on the box. And uh, that, becomes, that name is often transferred onto a blackboard for your fish of the day special. So that's the true provenance that we're, we're aspiring to. A um, bit about our fishermen, um, Dave Moore's out there in the crowd somewhere, Dave Kelly and a couple of guys um, who have been particularly pioneering um, around the early days of seabird mitigation. So Tory lines, which I'll talk a bit more about soon, are, um, are nowadays a regulated measure, but far before they were, a, they were had to be used, the guys were experimenting with them as a way of avoiding seabird bycatch. Um, Dave Moore's been involved in the early camera trials and, and even pre that, um, testing out cameras on his boats. So I think it's worth noting that the, the, guy, the fishermen, it's, it's not they do things because they have to do, do it. The, the guys are so deeply, um, the, the care and respect for the environment they're working and they do it as a, as a duty of care rather than just what they have to do. Um, with long lining, we're, we're fortunate to 
um, to, to land the, it's, it's the best quality you can receive out of the methods, but it does have an inherent, um, more of a risk to seabirds than some of the other fishing methods. So we absolutely acknowledge that and uh, we'll go into some detail as to how we avoid catching them. So Black Petrol Working Group, I'll just skip through this. I think Janice Malloy from Southern Seabird Solutions Trust as part of Nicola's um, presentation sort of summarised it, but it's a fairly unique group um, which we're part of as well as Moana New Zealand and Sanford. Um, so we're the main companies fishing in the foraging area for, of the Black Petrol out here. Um, but it, it's a unique group because we're around the table with, with the environmental NGOs, government, statutory bodies and of course iwi. Um, it was formed in 2014 and um, <clears throat> after the 2013 MPI seabird risk assessment showed the black petrel to be the most, the, by far the most at risk seabird um, in New Zealand waters um, and has the overarching goals of reducing fishing pressure on seabirds in fisheries management area one which is North Cape to East Cape um, as well as recognising seabird, uh, sorry recognising fishermen as seabird advocates. So um, in 2014 we all signed, all the, the members of the Black Petrol Working Group signed our pledge. Um, now this was sort of to take a stand <clears throat> and um, try to regain some of the lost ground that we've over time um, basically to, yeah, to get the Black Petrol numbers back to where, where we'd like them. And so this, we plan to do this via a series of initiatives. So I'm going to run through now what, what's actually being done both on and off the water. Some of these are initiatives directly out of this working group and others are either regulatory method, uh, um, measures or things that, uh, that the guys have done over the time just be, that have become best practice. So um, the first one, Tory line. So Tory's Japanese word, um, basically the, it, 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 the whole a Tory line, the idea of it is it's a sort of 100 metre long rope with a road cone or a windy boy, a, a big buoy tied on the end of it and it hangs out the back of the boat as the guys are setting their gear. So as the hooks are going down into the water, this um, line hangs above it with a series of streamers and the bird's natural behaviour is they won't, they're, they're visual feeders, so they're watching that bait go down and diving on it, but because there's a streamer there, it distract, it, it means that they, yeah, they hold off, they don't dive. <clears throat> it's very effective, um, it's, it's quite a challenge for the guys in windy conditions and things to keep it above exactly where they want it, but they've got various ways and means of doing that. Um, some other, other um, ways that we uh, avoid capturing, so line weighting, um, straightforward, the more, more weights you clip on the backbone, the faster the line gets out of, the, out of harm's way. Um, offal management, so the guys, rather than traditionally the baits that would come back up on the haul, tossing over their shoulder and um, effectively creating that association of the seabirds and a, and a boat being a, an easy place to get a feed, they throw them into a bin now, and that's just tipped over it in one go later in the, later in the day. Um, setting at night or early morning, this is when the fishing tends to be best anyway, but um, because they're visual feeders it's the best way to avoid capture. Um, the guys will move on or, or stop setting their gear altogether if they, they end up in a particular hot spot, um, particularly when the, the petrels or, or other birds are fledging their chicks, they can become very voracious in their feeding habits. Um, and we also, we, we're also, um, DOC has funded a program um, of liaison officers, so there's two guys, they're both ex-fisheries observers, spend a lot of time on, on all array of different size shapes, uh, shaped boats, which our inshore fleet's made up of. Um, they set at different rates, they, they're all completely unique, so it's important that these guys get on board and what they do is help the, work with the skippers and crew to develop a ta tailored seabird management plan for that vessel. Um, <clears throat> so this will cover off what they do in certain weather conditions in terms of how often they line weight, what they do with, with, if more birds show up. Um, as well as some of the other things we talked about, making sure they're aware of their offal management and um, the Tory lines fit for purpose. Um, we're also involved in some voluntary camera trials. Um, these spawned out of the, the Black Petrol Working Group and um, the group wanting some better information as to how many birds were being captured so we could focus our, our efforts. Um, as well as fishers were say, sort of rolling their eyes in the group saying, hell, we're not catching that many birds, but because the MPI um, observer program, the, the observation percentages are, are very, very low, so we didn't actually know. Um, so the objectives of the trials were to compare um, humans versus cameras in terms of accuracy of, of observing, um, detecting cap <coughs> captures, um, as well as investigating the cost benefit, because obviously having a camera running 24-7 on the boat is a much um, more cost effective option than a, having a human out there every day. 
Um, so government and industry funded. Uh, there was a trial in 2015 on uh, Adam Clough's vessel out in the crowd there, the Southern Cross. Um, and this has currently been expanded into 12 vessels across Sanford, um, Moana, New Zealand and Lee Fisheries fleet. Um, that unfortunately I don't have any results to report on. It's being all up for analysis at the moment between um, MPI and NIWA. So off the water um, workshops. So we've found that Cam Speedy, who's a um, wildlife biologist, Taupo based, um, has been running these. I think he said last week or two weeks ago we had an amazing one in Whangarei. Uh, I think it was his 18th one. And um, basically we get together, talk about the local seabirds, um, best practice mitigation, what's been working on and off the water. Um, and, it, and the guys share their knowledge. So they usually, it usually starts off, you arrive, a whole lot of, particularly the crew who aren't sure really why they have to go along to this thing on their day off. They already know about seabirds. They're in the car park having a durry early morning. And, oh, Tom, what are we doing here on our day off? And usually the language is a little bit more colourful. Um, <laughs> literally three or four hours later, it's like that school trip where the five-year-old, everyone wants to be the person the teacher asks to say, oh, just on behalf of Drury Primary School, I thank you. You know, they're all they're that, they're that into it. So it's just amazing the, the, the turnaround that we see. Um, so yeah, Whangarei last two weeks ago, we had 27 guys went through it and uh, yeah, awesome, fantastic feedback. Um, we also, uh, which has been touched on already, some of the same imagery here, um, courtesy a lot of it of Sean Lee, who's taking photos around here today. We um, both spent a night up at um, Mount Hirakimata at the colony with Biz Bell and a number of others. Um, we, we encourage the fishermen to get up there. We find that getting up close and personal, getting your arm up a burrow or banding a chick is just so, so powerful. And um, it's all very well, the classroom-based stuff, but it's, it's next level again to, to get the guys up the hill. So um, we've done, a lot, of, a lot of guys have already visited. We've rolled it out now across um, Lady Alice and Ohino in the past year and, uh, and also Little Barrier. Um, sorry, it's cut off a little bit there. We also have a trigger point system, so basically an email um, circulation between the, the fishing companies. So if someone's caught a black petrel or they're seeing a, a real hot spot of birds, we let each other know, because obviously, again, like everyone's been talking about collaboration and communication, it's um, vitally important. Um, so where do we see it going in the future? Well, I guess um, the, the first, the obvious things are we want to want to see what's what data we get out of these camera trials um, and ideally roll that out um, much further. It's particularly pertinent at the moment with MPI's IMARS program, which is the um, Integrated Electronic Monitoring and Reporting Systems. Um, they're planning on having cameras on boats 24-7, so they're actually learning a lot from smaller scale projects like this. Um, we want to see continuous improvement across all the vessels, accommodating these new ideas and inventions that are popping up and still, most of them still in, in sort of test phases. Um, our ongoing training, of course, new skippers and crew as they come through, as well as the uh, Black Petrol Working Group has gained some funding from the Gift Fund, part of Foundation North, um, to <clears throat> it's basically a scoping study to look at a seabird smart recognition scheme, um, and this would incentivise incentivise fisher best practice. So um, that's in progress at the moment, and I think we'll get an update as to uh, to where that's going or what what they're uh, recommending uh, in a month or so. So just before you go, I think we, um, we had some good conversation earlier. Um, Rochelle touched on it, and we had a question across here about recreational um, impacts on the Gulf, and, um, and I think that we're all, we're all part of the solution. Um, the, numbers of, the number of boats out there, and I wear both hats. I love, you know, love getting out there for a spearfish or a fish myself, and the number of boats on the Gulf is, is staggering, and, it, and it's awesome. It's great to see. But we've all been on a boat before where a bird's been captured, um, I've seen varying not, uh, sort of responses to how to handle that bird or get it back over the side. And these birds, particularly the smaller ones, if they're not handled the right way, they actually, their heart rate can get to a point where their heart literally explodes. There's been plenty of necropsy, you know what I mean? Cutting them up has <laughs> been done to prove that their actual hearts can explode. So it's vitally important that we all know how to handle those birds because if there's tens of thousands of wreck fishes, including me out on the Gulf, and we're, yeah, apparently the, the science is saying 70% of them are living, but we want to get that, get that number way up, um, it, particularly if a, you know, a fish has got a, 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 sorry, a bird's got a swallowed the hook or something, it, it's always a conundrum as what to do. So I've put some um, brochures out in the, at the front there. Hopefully you got one on the way in or on the way out. Their um, MPI and Southern Seabirds Trust has put them together. They're on really cool, um, not indestructible waterproof paper, so great to throw on the boat, pass them on to friends and family. 
Um, if you need more, then let us know and we'll, um, we'll get some, some out to you some other way. So yeah, the challenge is to, to learn how to handle a seabird if you catch one. And I just wanted to leave you with this image um, that my seven-year-old daughter Lucy drew last week. Uh, this is fishing vessel Strawberry running its Tory line, so practicing seabird smart fishing out on the Gulf. Thank you.